T-Wolves, Mavs. Look, uh, Luca was five for five, and five for 15 in game four, but he didn't really give much credit to Anthony Edwards, who was the main culprit on defense for that. He really just said the energy was low, even though most people disagreed with him on that. Uh, was it a bad night for Luca Chandler? Can we give some credit to Ant here? What, mix of both. Where are you on this? I think it's a mix of both, but I think you definitely have to give Ant credit from game one, him saying he's tired for him, you know, going at Kyrie, calling out to Kyrie and then having the shooting that he did um, to now to what he did in game four. You, you have to give him credit and and with the physicality, with the way they play, I, I think Luca, he can, he does get wherever he wants him and Kyrie both miss some bunnies, but this is a great defensive team. This is a team that's been number one defensively all year long. So, you know, they have different bodies to throw at them. I love when they put Kyle Anderson on them, Alexander Walker. So they have a bunch of different looks that they can throw at Luca. Uh, but again, Luca, he can be streaky. So no matter who he's guarding or who's guarding him, he can be streaky. He can settle at times for long step backs. He tries to draw fouls a little bit too much. And, and Ant, McDaniels, Kyle Anderson, these guys play physical and they do force your hand a little bit, but at the end of the day, I do think he just had an off night. He missed a lot of shots that he usually does make. Um, but they do present some sort of challenges with him, just how long, how physical that they play defense. But I, I chalk it up to a, a, a bad night, but we'll see. He, he's well, He's got another chance at it tonight. You know they're going to continue to throw different looks. They're going to blitz him. They're going to trap him. They're going to, you know, they're going to show him a bunch of different things that they've done all series long. So, uh, they're, they're a great defensive team for a reason. So you have to give them some sort of credit when you struggle offensively. Yeah. Keeping in mind the length uh, aspect there, Jane McDaniels had the Kyrie assignment. We all know Kyrie had an off night as well. He did give credit to McDaniels after this one, Lou, when you're watching this one, those first two games were, eh, did Minnesota figure something out? Yeah, they adjusted. I think they adjusted well. Um, they put some length on Kyrie to kind of make him, uh, finish over some length, finish over some size, make him more of a driver, you know, especially with with those two guys, with Luca and Kyrie, who are so dangerous behind the three-point line. Now you're starting to figure out that we got to make them play inside of the lane, you know, and at the same time, we got Rudy Gobert, we got Cat, we got Nas Reed, those guys that can protect the rim to, to minimize pain points um, throughout the course of that game. So putting Jaden McDaniels on Kyrie, making him a driver, making him have to finish in the lane, um, against that size. I think that was a great adjustment. And obviously Kyrie and, and Luca, they'll come out tonight and make their adjustments. So, you know, this I feel like this game is gonna be one for the books. You know, when when you get one, when you get one, you have the confidence to go out there and get two, especially on your home court. You know, so if Minnesota Timberwolves, they get an opportunity to win this basketball game tonight, it's a completely different series. And I think that's gonna come on the on the shoulders of uh, Jaden McDaniels and the way that he guards and the way that he puts pressure on them guys as well on the offensive end of the floor. So let's, uh, let's get, oh yeah, go ahead. That's a good point too, because when you go down 3-0, you're thinking, damn, like, how do we beat these guys? We're doing this, it's not working. We're getting good shots, not going down. So just for them to have the confidence of getting one on game four, going back home. Now, if I'm Minnesota, I'm thinking, okay, we know we can beat these guys. We just did it on the road. So we get this game here tonight. We know we can go and beat them in Dallas because we just did. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, I think this is, this game is everything tonight. Everything shifts after this series. Um, after this game tonight. And this is this is massive, obviously, for both sides. I feel like I know the answer to this question, Chandler, so I'll start with you. But those first three games, you had Luca and Kyrie outscoring them by 70. In game four, Ant and Cat outscored them by 10. You just said it. This game is everything. It, it can completely... Obviously, it's over if Minnesota loses, but if they win, change of plans. Who's having the better night? Which duo? Mm -hmm. Do all I got to go with Kyrie and Luca? I think they're they know the pressure of this game. They know the expectations that with this game, all everything goes back to them. Carl Anthony Towns had a great game. We have to give him his flowers up till last night. But before that, he was three of twenty-two from the three. He's constantly in foul trouble, so he was pretty bad till last game. So can he put two games together? Can he be that offensive piece that they need to go with Anthony Edwards and? He's obviously the key to them. You know you're going to get Anthony Edwards being aggressive. You know you're going to get him scoring 25, 30 points. It just depends on how many shots it takes him to get that. Carl Anthony Towns, for me, is the key for them. He's got to get aggressive. He's got to stay out of foul trouble. He's got to, he's got to take good threes. A lot of times he kind of just catches and shoots really high and doesn't take his time and, take, and rushes, takes bad looks. He feels like he's got to get involved. Uh, for me, it's it's not about the duos. It's, it's about Carl Anthony Towns. 
for the Timberwolves, and it's about the other guys for the Dallas Mavericks. Is P.J. Washington, can he go back to what he did in the first two rounds and, and start making shots? Can Derrick Jones hit the shots and have big games? Can they get something from Jaden Hardy and Josh Green again that they've been getting sporadically? So for me, it's it's not about these two duos. You know what you're going to get with Luka. You know what you're going to get with Ant. It's Towns for the Timberwolves, and it's the other guys for Dallas, in my opinion. Lou, uh, if Cat has 18 or more points, the team is 7-1, and one, and obviously his last game was a good one. Why am I nervous that he's going to come out slow tonight? Tell me I'm wrong. Well, he's showing you he's going to go out guns blazing. He's not gun shy. You know, that's one thing about it. He's going to get his attempts. He's going to get his, his shots at the rim. I would just like to see him be a little bit more aggressive. Sometimes I feel like he settles from that three-point line. Like, we're looking at these clips right here. You know, he's coming off a of screen. It's like he's a guard. Sometimes put your back to the basket. Put some pressure on these guys. Use your size. Um, use your body to put more pressure on, get you some easy looks, get you two to four free throws a quarter. You know, those things open that lid up. That makes that rim so much bigger when you're easy to just get easy opportunities. I think he lives and dies by the jump shot too much. You know, so this should be one of those games where he enforces his will on that defense and just constantly pound, pound. You open up that, you open up that lane, open up the paint, and then you stretch the floor out. Then you take your opportunities in a transition to shoot your threes, come off a of little screens and put pressure on these guys. So I think this will be a good night for Carl Anthony Towns. Hopefully he plays physical from start to finish of this game. And if he does that, I think he puts them in a great uh, position to win game five here.